Imagine a powerful tool that could silence unwanted genes, targeting diseases at their very core. This tool already exists within our cells, RNA interference, RNAi. Let's explore how this natural mechanism works, the FDA-approved agents based on RNAi technology and the innovative delivery methods being developed for these unique therapeutics. Imagine having a manual book that contains information on how to read genes and generate proteins. That's the mRNA. mRNA will be transferred to ribosomes so it can be translated. But what if there are unwanted or mutated genes or viral RNA? You need something to double check mRNA before it goes to the translation process. Here comes the role of RNA interference, RNAi. RNAi is a natural process that regulates gene expression by silencing unwanted genes. RNAi is triggered by the appearance of double-stranded RNA that can appear externally because of viral vectors which is called small interfering RNA or internally in response to transcription error which is named micro-interfering RNA. These two types don't only differ in their origin, but in the mechanism of RNA interference and the specificity of silencing genes. Let's start with CERNA mechanism, which is straightforward. The process start with the enzyme dicer that cuts double-stranded RNA into smaller pieces called siRNA. siRNA will be incorporated into RNA-induced silencing complex, or RISC. The RISC complex selects one strand of the siRNA, known as the guide strand, while the other strand is degraded. The guide strand of siRNA binds to a complementary sequence on the target mRNA. RISC can cleave the target mRNA at the site of CERNA binding, leading to its degradation, or can prevent the ribosomes from translating mRNA, leading to gene silencing. For miRNA, the process starts differently as it starts from the nucleus. miRNA genes are transcribed from DNA into primary miRNA. The Drosha enzyme cleaves PRIMERNA into a precursor miRNA molecule. After that, premiRNA molecules are exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm with the help of the exportant 5 protein. Then it continues the process similar as CERNA from dicer to RISC, then base pairing. But the catch here is that miRNA often targets mRNA through imperfect base pairing, allowing for broader regulation and potential targeting of multiple genes. SIRNA and miRNA are being studied for treating different diseases and conditions. For example, one cancer by targeting and silencing oncogenes, which are the genes that promote cancer growth. Two, targeting viral RNA, preventing viral replication. Three, targeting certain gene mutation expression to treat genetic disorders. Four, silencing genes involved in inflammation and autoimmune process. Up to date of making this video, there are six siRNA-based therapy approved by FDA. For example, inclisirin for treating primary hyperlipidemia, givisirin for treating acute hepatic porphyria, and lumazirin for treating acute hyperoxaluria type 1. For miRNA, there are still no FDA-approved agents, but many studies are currently running. The mode of administration is crucial for the success of such therapy. For conditions affecting specific tissues, CERNA can be directly injected into the affected area. In some cases, CERNA can be injected intravenously for systemic distribution. However, this often requires encapsulation to protect the CERNA from degradation and ensure delivery to target tissues. For that, we may utilize lipid-based delivery system. One, liposomes. These are spherical structures composed of lipid bilayers that can encapsulate CERNA. They can be designed to target specific cell types or tissues. Two, lipid nanoparticles. These are smaller particles that can be formulated to enhance CERNA delivery and reduce off-target effects. That's the end for RNA interference. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll dive into the revolutionary gene editing technology, CRISPR.